And it's a good Sunday morning. I'm the Sultan. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. Feeling good today? I had an evening on Twitter last night. Didn't want this, but ended up having some kind of like weird ass argument with some weird ass conservative wife telling me how life is. Some stay at home mommy with four kids whose husband is providing for her and she's telling me about life. And when I look at her Twitter feed, all I saw was, I'm so lucky my husband unloads the dishwasher. He does everything for me. Good, honey. You got him trained well. That's fine. That's why I say churches pretty much are beta training for most men. When you hear the phrase, be a leader in your home, that usually means be submissive. That's where happy wife, happy life comes in. That's when I used to go to men's retreats and Bible studies. You would hear things like, well, let me check with the boss first. Or guys would say, so how's your better half doing? So men uh, promoting that nonsense amongst each other. It's not funny. It might seem like it's put out in jest at first. But over a long period of time, what happens is it weakens the man. Eliminate that stuff from your language. She's not your better half. She, is, she compliments you. She compliment men and women are yin and yang. They're meant to complement each other, to work together. That's what a relationship is. People working together. But one person has to take the lead. And when it comes to certain areas of expertise, certain people, like for instance, my ex-wife couldn't cook for shit. You wouldn't want to eat anything that she made. I feel sorry for anyone who is currently eating what she is cooking. We did what our strengths were. So I cooked. And I happened to enjoy it as well. I love being in the kitchen. But I'll never forget what a, um, the mother and father of a girlfriend that I had many, many years ago, the father said to me, a long time ago, we came to the uh, agreement that she changes diapers and I change the tires. And that was his tongue-in-cheek of weighing, uh, tongue-in-cheek way of saying that the division of labor was, and the type of labor that was divided in the household was agreed upon. You do what you're good at. If you're good at finances, then you do the finances. If you suck at it, then it would be stupid for your family to, for you to be in charge of the finances and paying bills and that type of thing. So you do what you're good at. Men and women complement each other. That's, that's the goal. Complement each other. Bring the best out of each other. But the flip side of that is that you can also bring the worst out of each other. So you have to have a, a, a mechanism that kind of balances things out when you get into a fight. Just like little rules, like you don't argue. Or you don't discuss things after 8 o'clock at night. You don't go to bed angry. you got to make your own rules. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'll make some suggestions. But let's get going today. It's a good morning. But first, coffee, seriously. When people posture about other people selling stuff, it's because they have low self-worth, they don't know how to sell, and they're too lazy to learn, they are too broke and have never done anything about it, they don't believe that they personally possess anything of value or can create anything of value, and they speak only in tweets and Reddit forum talk. Women always have been beauty objects to men. And men have always been success objects to women. 
The reason why your dad doesn't give a shit is because of your mother. She'll never admit that. She made it so difficult for him that he just basically said, fuck it. I'm not saying that's right either, but she is no angel. Twin sons. One is a successful CEO, one is a convict. When asked why they were in the positions they were in life, both replied, if you knew about my father, You know, you can use anything or anyone as a reason to lose or a reason to succeed. One son used his father as a reason to propel himself forward and succeed. The other son used his father as an excuse for his failures in life. Don't you hate it when you swipe left so hard that your phone goes flying across the room and the screen cracks? If you're not selling, you are selling out. Selling yourself out. Always be selling. Always. And you do it whether you know it or not. And most likely you're a bad salesperson. Learn how to sell. The best thing you can ever do for yourself. A snowy day, me and the owner at the barber shop. No customers in sight. His dad brings us coffee. Hey, let's do a video, he says. On what, the dad says. I said, how about a shaving video? Okay, who are we going to shave? The old man says, me, you can shave me. So I shaved him. While the owner recorded it with his phone. It was uploaded to YouTube. It now has 2.2 million views. A snowy day, no customers, almost ready to pack it up and go home. And we said, okay, let's do a video. Proof that not everything has to be perfectly planned out. Point the camera towards yourself and press record. Document, like Gary Vee says, don't create. If you try to create a show, try to create perfect conditions, lighting and everything's perfect, and your message is perfect and you're reading a teleprompter, and you're going through bullet points, then go teach in a university somewhere. If you're doing something on video on YouTube, let it be real. Make it look like you're talking to me over a cup of coffee like I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all of you right now as if you are sitting across the table from me in the cozy nook and having coffee with me. That's it. Ladies, get off of Twitter right now and give your man the beach that he deserves. He already did enough chore play today in the house. Conserva, conservative women sitting there arguing with strangers on what manhood is all about. Yeah. Is it quiet where you live or not? When you step outside of your house, what do you hear? Put your comments down below. I have the universal answer to the question, what was I thinking? You ever hear people say that? What was I thinking? I have the answer to that. You weren't thinking. All right, get ready for some controversy because this blew up Twitter last night. Blew it up. Staying together for the kids. I can't think of a more lame reason. You already got married for the worst reason, love. I love him, I love her, the worst reason. Love is a commitment. Love is not a feeling. And that didn't last too long now, did it? So it's better that the kids spend time with a happy mom who lives here and a happy dad who lives over here, each on their own turf. And that way they can grow up remembering a happy mom and a happy dad. Not a mom and a dad bitching at each other in a shitty home situation. 
I'm obviously not a stick it out to the bitter end kind of guy anymore. I used to be that way. I'm not that way anymore. Sometimes divorce can create two happy parents that the children can be exposed to. It's better to have a happy mom and a happy dad instead of a marriage that should never have happened in the first place, raising kids in a toxic mess disguising as a family. I was an expert in parenting at one time until I had kids. I forgot how good Four Roses bourbon is. Very old school. Super old school. And I got my first bottle of Angostura orange bitters. And I made myself an old-fashioned last night with Four Roses and orange bitters. And I said, cheers, Grandpa. Nothing wrong with making the drink of someone that you loved and raising a glass to them. They appreciate it. And you'll feel better about it, too. I am not anti-Christian. I am not anti-church. I am Christian. I am currently not going to church. I want to get back to church again. I do. I went to a Christian college. I went to a seminary. I went to a university. Um, I feel at home with PCA churches, Presbyterian Church in America, what I would call historic creed churches. I love the scholarship of the PCA, the non-emotional approach to scripture and theology. Although I am reformed in my theology, I think I lean more towards reformed Baptist. That's probably what I am closest to. Think bigger than your critics. I need to tell you that every single week. Think bigger than your critics. Christian men go through divorce at the same rate as others. It's not any less because they're Christian. And it might hurt even more because of your expectations and wanting to wave the magic Jesus wand and make everything all better. Pastors won't admit that they were part of the problem because they have zero answers for you when your shit hits the fan. That's why Christian men sink so low because they've been so surrounded by that the miraculous is just every day. You're just surrounded by miracles and God's gonna heal the marriage. When I hear someone say, God healed our marriage, that means, whew, I got away with something. That's what that means. Young men raised by primary custody moms, your dad is not a demon. His give a was beaten out of him by the divorce and the custody process, church, your mom's friends, her family. So reach out to him. Reach out to him. Your dad's feeling down. He thinks that you hate him. He thinks that you are against him. Learn not to be. Now that's real world shit right there. Young men raised by mothers and only seeing dad every other weekend and maybe one night a week Everything that she taught you about men and your dad is wrong. Everything. Your dad still hurts for not being in your life. Even if he made bad decisions, it hurts him. Your dad has more wisdom than you were ever led to believe or that your mom ever told you. And finally, your dad is not an asshole. There is a direct correlation between a man's impending hard emotional crash and how much he talks about his girlfriend or his wife on social media. And it's not just the talking. It's the obsessive dopamine rush-ish. I can't do a thing without her. 
Dude, you better find another dopamine rush. Your life doesn't revolve around her. You complement each other. If she's your reason for living when she's gone, you won't have a reason to live. You hear me? If she is your reason for living when she's gone, you won't have a reason to live. Get other reasons to live and exist and wake up other than the girl in your life. Men are visual and women are visionary. Money doesn't solve past sexual abuse issues. I'm seeing people getting compensated for priests or sexual abuse from priests and this kind of thing, like these payouts. Money doesn't solve past sexual abuse issues like some people think. It doesn't. So victim compensation lawyers are fucking assholes. They don't care. The answer is justice. A million dollars awarded to you doesn't alleviate the fact that a priest sucked your dick or rammed you when you were eight years old. Justice is the true compensation. Seek justice, not the money. They showed you a statue, they told you to pray, they built you a temple, they locked you away. Oh, but they never told you the price you would pay. Billy Joel. 1977. Actually, I'm kind of suspect of anyone who doesn't like Billy Joel, one of my favorite composers of all time. What is the best carnivore, keto, low-carb, high-fat thing to eat when you get the munchies? Uh, late at night, there's times when I get the munchies, and honest to God, the first thing I start chowing on traditionally was junk. I like people say chew on vegetables. I don't want to do vegetables. Not interested. I'm thinking maybe beef jerky. Like a w super well dried <laughs> beef jerky. But I gotta have the crunch. I gotta have the crunch. It can't be mushy. Like for me munchies is not like rolled up cold cuts. Some people said like salami and cheese. I get that. I could have that for lunch. Just roll up. But you know, I'm trying to eat less processed crap with nitrates and nitrates and whatever the hell that shit is. I'm trying to do a lot less of that. The Sultan Blessing is May your pocket squares never match your tie. So don't ever tell me my pocket square needs to match my tie. I do that on purpose. And I'm glad you pointed that out. Your pocket square should never match your tie. It creates cognitive dissonance in the eye of the beholder when they see asymmetry. You stand out. You become memorable. There's a reason why I do what I do. When someone says that they never did it, but had many opportunities to do it, that means they did it. Cheating always happens in the head first. Dusty Springfield listened to a wide range of music, including George Gershwin, Rodgers and Hart, Rodgers and Hammerstein, Cole Porter, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, and Glenn Miller. Look her up, Dusty Springfield. Look who influenced her. Read her Wikipedia. Hence, her amazing capability to sing soul music. Unbelievable. Watch as many live Dusty Springfield performances that you can on YouTube. It's just going to open up a whole new world. She was big in the 60s. Just watch her stuff. Blow your mind. Every time you feel baited or an argument brewing with your partner, just up and go to the gym. You'll be jacked in three months. I 
I can actually guarantee that you will be jacked in three months. If every time that you have an issue with anything, just some kind of trouble, and you feel like an argument brewing, honey, I'm going to the gym. That goes for men and women. I'm going to the gym. And turn what could normally be an argument into something that's going to be productive, helpful. Let's go back to my blog. What do I want to read for you today? Let's see. It never fails. I go to a restaurant with friends and family, and many of them women. Sometimes there might be a whole table of us. The scenario is as follows. We order appetizers, the entrees, wine, and, or bring our own bottle. When we are done, the server always asks if we would like to see the dessert menu and brings over the dessert tray. Everyone looks at it, we hear all the oohs and ahs, and then nobody orders a dessert except me. To me, dinner is not complete with a little bit of sweet of some type. It doesn't have to be a lot. It just has to be a little bit. I like that. If it's an Italian restaurant, which is, in my case, it usually is. It's usually tiramisu, along with a cappuccino. Every one of them says they're too full or they make some kind of calorie or fat content statement. And I never think that because I believe you can eat pretty much what you want in moderation. And if you're smart... You don't have to eat the whole darn cheesecake. Just a little sliver will do. And then take the rest home. Cigars are the same. If I don't have an hour, then you fire up one of those little tiny five-minute cigars. Never relight a cigar. It's a no-no. It's not like a dessert that you can enjoy later. Well, this is what happens. My tiramisu or cheesecake comes to the table and everyone is staring at it. Then I get attacked by five forks with everybody saying, I just want to taste. Yeah, sure. After five to eight tastes, I have half of a dessert left, and I end up lecturing everyone by saying, get your own next time. Undoubtedly, it happens again, so when will I ever learn? I remember being with my ex and said up front, I'll just take a little taste of yours. Again, and she always said, I'll just take a little taste of yours. Again, I ended up with half of a dessert, whether it's five forks or one fork making its way to my plate five times. I don't like it, and I don't understand the mindset. At risk of being called sexist, I have to say that no man has ever said he wants just a taste of my dessert. Do you ever notice that? No man ever goes, give me just a taste. Guys don't share like that. We don't even try. It just doesn't happen. My enjoyment of a cigar starts with the minute that I buy it, take it from humidor, I smell it, put it in my briefcase, my shirt pocket. If I'm driving, I take it out of my pocket, slide a couple inches of it out of the cellophane wrapper and smell it. Enjoy a nice whiff. If I'm out in public or with some guy friends, I'll say, check this out, and they're going to smell it and say, wow, where'd you get that? Or what brand is it? If I'm out fishing with a couple buddies, they'll never say, Hey, can I just take a puff of yours? I enjoy my cigar long before I fire it up. To me, that's what it's all about. The anticipation of having the cigar later. So I'm sitting on the back deck with a female friend. We're grilling something, maybe enjoying my new favorite Sardinian wine. I fire up my cigar and she says, Wow, that smells great. I shake my head in agreement. I don't want to talk. I just want to enjoy my stogie. I noticed her staring at me and I say, Would you like one of your own? And she gives me the dessert reply. 
No, I'll just take a little puff of yours. Here we go again. That little puff leads to two, maybe three. And then she complains that it's all wet on the end, so I wipe it off for her. I again say that I have one for her. She goes, no, 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 I'll just take a puff of yours. You can't escape it, men. No wonder men love smoking cigars with other men or by themselves. It's like having a mini vacation that you can enjoy all by yourself. I guess I'm going to have to learn to say, get your own cigar. And with that, have a great day. Subscribe to the channel. Bang the thumbs up button. Put comments down below. There are sponsors who make this channel happen. Visit those sponsors, just like you would visit any commercial sponsors on a television show. And I hope the best for you. Don't just sit back and listen to the things that I say. If you enact and put to practice one little thing, leverage one little activity or mindset, your life is going to change, male or female. 2018 is gone, which means that you have some time to ramp up for 2019, because 2019 is the year that you get unstuck, and 2020 can be the year that you make your first million dollars. And with that, enjoy the rest of your coffee. See you tomorrow.